If you go to your bathroom and you turn on the tap, that's a valve. So everything that's going to control a fluid, whether it's water, whether it's petrol, whether it's gas, um, and you have to move that fluid, you have to have a valve because you've got to switch it off at some point in time. So if you go into your bathroom in the morning and you switch the tap off and you walk out, well, the result is everything's going to flood or you'll spend a lot of money and you waste water. So that's what valves are. They manage and control how you get your water, how we get our petrol. So if you want petrol to come from Durban in a pipeline to Johannesburg, every now and then you have to have a valve which you can close so that you can control what's happening with that fluid. If you look at, let's just take your your normal water industry, your drinking water. So it comes from a reservoir. Now, if you, if you open, if everybody had to open taps, you'd land up with no water pressure. You wouldn't be able to put your hoses on. You would have no water coming out of your shower. And that's all managed by a control valve. So the guy who sits there and he's now designing, um, let's say you're going to proclaim in your township and you're going to have so many houses. The person who designs the water piping has to be engineering qualified to decide what kind of control valves is he going to put in there, um, how do you set those control valves. You know, if you look at fire hydrants, every fire hydrant is actually a valve. Um, if you look at Eskom, for example, the steam that goes through boilers to actually run the turbines is controlled by valves. Uh, Petra SA, you know, they take gas from underground and un under sea. If you didn't close, if you weren't able to close that off somehow, that gas would just spew out of the sea and you'd have pollution. So you need a valve there that can close it and open it when you need the gas. Look, it's a wide, wide range of, of, of career paths. Obviously, artisans is a big one. Um, welders, fitters, fitters and turners, um, that's a big, big area. Um, project managers, design engineers, obviously salespeople, quality control, quality assurance. Those are all very, very much needed in our industry and in short supply. Somebody who's, who's trained to operate, well, basically to operate a machine of type or to create something that can operate a machine. So he can make a jig, he can adapt things to, to ensure that he can machine something to a tolerant size. I started here as a qualified artisan and then from then on I moved I moved up the ladder through this company and uh, I've learned a lot over the years in this company. I can also do now programming. I'm qualified in drafting through the country and uh, over the years they've gave me, given me the opportunity to learn all these different skills. I am currently the, the main workshop manager responsible for over 50 people. My name is Imtiaz and I'm working for Gundrick Bells. Uh, first I started off uh, working into another metal industry company where I was doing the pattern designing and I was doing the uh, recording of all the pattern equipments and then we came across the, um, the article for the looking for an apprentice at Gundrick which I did apply for and was successful in getting it. I like working with my hands and sitting behind a desk is not exactly my cup of tea. Uh, always wanting to learn things and get physical, physically involved in doing it was my way of thinking and my way of option. So that's the reason why I decided to come into this. A lot of young people they want to have their own companies. But then now, 
if we if we all want to have our own companies, we can't make it if because we, you can't only come here and be be have your own company where you don't have skills. So we all need skilled labors. We all need skilled labors. You can't. You, you, I mean, simply like here. When you're cleaning, they already want to. When they interview a cleaner, they need your metric with math and, and, and science. In your in your theory mind, you can ask yourself, why would they want that? Do they want a cleaner with a metric, a math, with math and science? No, it's because they they have future plans with for you for any each and every labor they hire or each and every employee they have. So it is it is very much of a good. Uh, it is very much of a good career to to have, or maybe at least a career path to to to, to go on. It's a good track, especially when you, when you're still very young. Well, maths you use a lot in the career you are forming. Um, we need to work out dimensions and obviously angles and stuff like that. And um, you use your maths a lot, science a bit of it as well, but I would say more maths you use in science. Uh, well, is to wake up and come to work and enjoy what I'm doing, because uh, engineering is the future for me. I enjoy it a lot because it was my passion. Well, in 10 years' time, I see myself as one of the big guys. Yes, maybe managing director, maybe here in RGR. Yes. Uh, the advice I'll give them is uh, they must study hard at school, and especially maths and science, because those are vital subjects that they're going to use. And the engineering trade is very interesting and mind challenging. So. We need more people to come into trade, to this kind of trade, and especially females as well. Especially the kids must stay away with the alcohol and drugs and other, other specific stuff like uh, marijuana, so whatever, so that maybe they can concentrate on the school and then uh, so that they can get the, the better future. Our youth need to take mathematics at school, they need to as far as possible go right through school and they need to embrace I think artisan training. There are too many people we see trying to, to leave school to take jobs where they perceive that a, a, a suit and a, and a fancy pair of shoes are going to be the ticket. We need people to actually work with their hands. Manufacturing environments, manufacturing countries that manufacture are always stronger, more stable and less susceptible to downturns like we saw in 2008. The countries that didn't flinch during that time weren't service orientated countries, they were countries that had a strong manufacturing base. So I think if I was a youth today, I'd be looking at getting a job in an environment like that, where I know it's sustainable and I can have a job for the rest of my life. And with that, I can start my own business at some stage, and I'm gonna have the skills to provide for my family for 40 years. I think you can do anything you want to do. I think South Africa's got the potential that you can do anything you want to do.